Hey guys, so as you can see, I've got my espresso machine set up here. This is the decent espresso. Now I just got this back in from my friend, um, but I'm missing a couple of equipment. I'm missing my pitcher, I'm missing my tamp pad, and I'm missing my little, my thing for, for all the puck and stuff like that. But regardless, um, I got it back today, set it up, and I started doing a lot of testing. So I'm gonna share with you guys some of the new findings I've had. Now I've had this machine for about two years. It's been really cool. Um, everything about this machine is customizable. I can change the water, uh, the flow rate, the water temperature, and the water temperature can fluctuate every second if I really wanted to, but it's not necessary. We're just gonna start with something basic, and then I'm gonna share with you guys some of my findings and then my, uh, my discoveries as we kind of work with such an advanced machine. So this tablet is actually what programs everything on this machine. You can tap and turn on. Uh, without the tablet, it doesn't really turn on or anything. Um, so it's actually important that you can see it's connected here. If I didn't turn it on, um, this thing doesn't need to be heat up. So without the tablet, this thing is, I think, kind of useless. Now, while it's heating up, let me show you guys some stuff. You can see that there's a graph um, over here. Now on the graph, uh, you, can, you can literally just program everything. So that's where how the water temperature. Um, and then you can go to the settings and you can play around with a different preset. So there's a bunch of presets here. I've got my standard one. This is my personal one. Um, and then over here is the back end of everything. You can change it so you can have many parts to it. I have a pre-infusion. Um, and then I have like the, the, the normal pull shots. But essentially this is kind of how it works. You can program everything. Now, a few cool things about this machine is as it's heating up, you can see this is where the, the, the basket goes. Now I have a shot in here because I was playing with it like five minutes ago. Um, and then, this is there's a steam wand over here and then there's so this is actually a, a shot mirror it's it's built in it's really cool and then there's this which is for all the liquids and then uh, at the back of everything there's a there's a water tray now it comes with this tamper and this tamper kind of moves only um, to a certain distance so when I pull shots and I do and do my tamping I actually kind of like to fill my my baskets I, I brew everything based on volume instead because this is a fixed height so let me show you guys how I pull a shot and what it looks like and how it tastes notice how I just try to make sure so when I when I do things by volume it just means I want to fill this whole thing up to the top so in my opinion I'm a little bit short on beans right now um, I could probably fill it up to the top a little bit more you can see that there's a little bit of space over here on the side but it's all right for the purpose of the video you know and for the fact that I'm still learning this is 20 grams of beans this is actually 21 grams of beans and the porta filter is made for 20 grams of beans. Now this is kind of ghetto because I don't have my own WDT set up, nor do I have my, um, my my little puck thing, but it is what it is. We're just gonna do it like this. So I normally tap it, it makes it as even as possible, and then when we tamp, we just press. And I give a little turn. So here, there's a pretty good looking puck. And yeah, let's pull a shot together. So we first lock in the puck. And then let me show you guys. So we're up here now. This is where the screen is. And then there's like a bunch of buttons over here. So what you want to do is you want to tap this button right over here. Oh, I forgot to put my cup down. There's, there's my cup and I put a cup down there now. Um, so this will start the program. And then as you guys can see, we're in the pre-infusion stage. So as it kind of gets going, You'll see that the water flow, um, and then the one's like a pressure line, and then the other one's the water flow line. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to set it so that the puck right now is filling up with liquid. And then we're gonna have like a long pre-infusion. I think I have this one currently set at 30 seconds. So after 30 seconds, we're gonna have a pre-infusion. Now, what the idea behind the pre-infusion is, is I'm trying to get water to fill up the basket. 
Oh. And then as it drips out, um, so that would be, and then that would be kind of like what's the profile looking like. So the the orange one is the is the water flow rate, and then the blue one is kind of like building the pressure, and then this is kind of what it's looking like right now. It's a little watery. I probably could go a little bit uh, finer. I don't remember working with this bean earlier. I had a different bean in here, and so what you're going to see is you're going to see that I have a lot of splashing around. And that just means I didn't have enough pressure. Now I know that might not have looked like the most successful shot. The shot itself looks pretty good. Uh, we've got a nice layer of crema and then the rest of it is kind of liquid. I actually pull a little bit larger of a shot um, just because some coffees need more water. Um, I didn't stop it in time, but it is what it is. The shot itself is quite good. So for me, when it comes to coffee in general, um, I like to have something that's a, a constant. Now, like I said, because the tamper goes a fixed distance, I actually like to, to do my espressos based on volume. So I always fill the portafilter. And then the only thing we really change is the grind size. Now, when it comes to the grind size, I find that um, darker coffees need to go a little finer and then lighter coffees need to go a little coarser. That's because when, it, when we look at the pour over side, um, Lighter coffees have less gases. And so when you have less gases, it just means it's ready to absorb. And when it's ready to absorb, it can build pressure at a much faster rate. Whereas for a darker coffee, you're gonna have the opposite effect. Now the interesting about this is, you know how when I do pour overs, I actually don't bloom, but then I for, for espressos, I have a pre-infusion. And then the pre-infusion is actually quite a long time. Sometimes when we're looking at pour overs, especially for the darker coffees, um, there's a lot of gases being given out. And the longer you pre-infuse for, the, the more time it has for the bubbles to kind of dissipate and then for the pressure within the puck to build more evenly. So with the pre-infusion, you can have a more, um, a more balanced kind of pressure distribution inside the puck itself. And then with that you can also get rid of some of the gases so some of the darker coffees can extract a little bit better um, as for the water ratio I, I do somewhere between like a like most of the time people do like two parts out I do three parts out I, I personally think that we need a little bit more water to flush all the flavors out now that could be because I have a slower polling profile I'm not too sure but uh, yeah let's kind of play around with the espresso arc I'm gonna be uploading a lot more so follow along I mean, if you want to follow the journey of like espresso or pour overs, I have some like interesting things to say and you know, there's a lot to learn we can learn from the espresso. Hopefully once I learn, um, I can take that and apply it back to my pour overs and let's go. So yeah, um, as always, thanks guys for watching. Um, catch you guys in the next one. Bye.